When the first dinosaur appeared some 230 million years ago, it was a small, speedy predator. The entire dinosaur family, which ruled the Earth for the next 165 million years, was born of this small beast. Early in its evolution, two separate lines of plant-eating dinosaurs appeared. How they evolved from that first carnivore is still an unsolved mystery. Over 100 million years after this first dinosaur, during the early Cretaceous period, a group of predatory theropods would begin this same incredible metamorphosis, from meat-eating to plant-eating. The missing link of this passage has just been uncovered on a Utah mesa in a mass grave that contains hundreds, possibly thousands of skeletons. The bones of the newly found species, named Falcarius utahensis, traces the journey from meat-eating predator to lumbering vegetarian. In a barren Utah wasteland, a group of scientists is journeying back in time, 125 million years. What they are uncovering may change what we know about dinosaurs forever. <laughs> Dino expert Jim Kirkland and his dedicated crew battle searing 100 degree temperatures as they pick, scrape and claw into a vast pit of horrors, a dinosaur mass graveyard. If we're conservative, we can guess that perhaps there's a million bones of this animal within this area. Um, that's, that's a pretty extraordinary sample. Most dinosaurs are only known by a few uh, bones, a partial skeleton from one individual. Here we're going to understand a, a population that we believe was probably killed about the same time. The Discovery Quest scientist is a veteran dinosaur hunter who has discovered numerous new species, including the most dominant killer of the early Cretaceous period, Utah Raptor, and the first Therizinosaur ever discovered in North America, Nothronychus. Now this new find promises to be his biggest ever. We're very fortunate in this site. We have so much skeletal material from babies to adults. We have every element of the animal represented except for a few parts of the front of the skull uh, and the front of the jaws. It was an animal that probably reached about three feet at the hips, walked on its hind legs, had a particularly long tail, got large forelimbs with, with large raptorial claws. Basically, even for an animal with three foot hip height, this thing could probably palm a basketball with its large hands an elongated neck and a fairly small elongated head. Particularly uh, interesting in this is it's got very tiny teeth. This thing has probably over a hundred teeth and these tiny teeth were not what you would expect in a typical meat-eating dinosaur. This group of animals is thought to be classically plant-eating animals. This is one that is so primitive it might be in the transition. Falcarius is literally caught in the act of evolving from a predator into a plant eater. The thing that really struck me about this site and the animal once I saw the teeth and the vertebra was that we had a Therizinosaur, an animal that's best known from Asia. Only a couple years earlier, a fellow by the name of Doug Wolf and myself, we described the first Therizinosaur ever found in North America. And that was pretty exciting. We were, we were charged. And then just a couple years later, we stumble onto this animal. And this animal is much, much older, perhaps the oldest one in the world. We have the biggest collection of material from this animal of any specimen anywhere in the world. It is a find Kirkland was grateful to get. It was a private collector who discovered this valuable dinosaur graveyard on federal property, land previously surveyed for fossil sites, and then passed over. The site was discovered uh, probably in the very last part of the... Uh, 20th century by a fellow from Moab out looking for agate by the name of Larry Walker. This is the hole that I dug into the hill. I worked uh, 
on my side and excavated the bones with uh, a small tool. So after excavating and bagging these fossils, I would take the pieces home and uh, reconstruct the individual bones. Walker sold the bones not needed for his skeleton on the black market. With close to two-thirds of a complete animal, he realized he had a new species and made an important decision. And then that's when I decided to turn this over to the state of Utah and uh, live with the consequences of my decision. Walker contacted Kirkland, but even with the coordinates, the experienced Utah State paleontologist was unable to find the elusive site. When we first came out here, we would never have found this site if Larry hadn't taken us right to the site itself. We got the coordinates, went out here, missed it. So we were walking on top of that surface, just out of sight of the quarry, looking for the site and missing it completely. If Larry Walker hadn't taken us right out here and put our nose on these bones, we would never have found this site. I was investigated, I was indicted, I was convicted of theft of federal property. Consequently, was given a five-month sentence with three years probation and a restitution amount of $15,000. Walker's decision to turn the site over to Kirkland was personally costly, but if he hadn't come forward, this important discovery would have remained buried in the Utah desert. Lindsay Zano understands how important the discovery of Falcarius is. She is a doctoral student at the University of Utah, specializing in therizinosaurs, the group of dinosaurs Falcarius gave rise to. Therizinosaurs are a truly bizarre group of animals. They've been mysterious ever since their first discovery. The first discovery of a therizinosaur was made on a joint Russian-Mongolian expedition in the 1950s. What the scientists found there were these giant, blade-like, three-foot-long claws, and the only animal they could think that that could belong to was a giant sea turtle. They were wrong. Forty years later, the Mongolian desert provided the true answer. The 1993 discovery of a nearly complete therizinosaur gave paleontologists the proof they needed. Skeletal similarities identified this bizarre group's place in the dinosaur family tree. Therizinosaurs evolved from meat-eating theropods. As the oldest known therizinosaur, Falcarius shares many characteristics with its predator cousins. We now know that therizinosaurs evolved from a group of dinosaurs known as raptor dinosaurs. Most people are familiar with them through the Velociraptor in the movie Jurassic Park. And they're the only group of dinosaurs that still exist today in modern birds. The raptor was the smartest, quickest, and most dangerous dinosaur of the Cretaceous period. Alone or in a pack, it was well equipped to deliver a lethal blow. Raptors possess speed, killing claws, and serrated teeth. Falcarius shared their forelimbs and swiftness and provides the missing link between raptors and the full-blown plant-eating therizinosaurs. Ninety million years ago, Nothronychus appeared. The size of an elephant, it towered over its raptor cousin. It had the claws of a killer, but its small head and long neck belonged to a plant-eater. It looked like a half-plucked turkey and walked like a pot-bellied bear. Therizinosaurs such as Nothronychus were rare in North America. They were long thought to have migrated from China. Now, its direct lineage has been uncovered in the Utah desert.